Uh, John? Yeah? Why is this horse on the front page of all the papers? Oh, um, it was uh, the Grand National yesterday. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, and uh, I deliberately didn't watch it live because I wanted the excitement of reading the results 18 hours later in the newspapers as nature intended. So, who won? The brown one. The brown one, great, that's what I wanted. Which brown one? Uh, uh, this one. All right. Uh, Pinot de Ray. Oh. Uh, apparently it's owned by a doctor. Owned by a doctor? Oh, uh, then you could say that it winning is just what the doctor ordered. Mm. Yeah, you, Sorry, you but could say that. <laughs> Somebody had to say it. Uh, yes, and the Telegraph did say it. Oh, did they? Uh, and so did the Mail. Right. Uh, and also the Observer, uh -huh. and finally the Sun. Right. A uh, lot of the Times, though, the Times said, Pinot de Ray, a horse trained by a practising GP, pushed the Grand National, a race never bound by a script, to the very edge of credulity. It pushed it to the edge of credulity? Oh. To the very edge of credulity. What does that mean? Well, imagine something so incredible that it couldn't possibly happen at a horse race. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Okay. I'm doing that. That didn't happen. Oh. All right, but take it down one. One of the horses is owned by a doctor? Yeah, that happened. That actually happened. A doctor owned a horse. I know. I know. The very edge of a doctor owned a horse. Yeah. In fact, um, according to Andrew Longmore, here in the Times, Dr Newland might even be the first graduate of Cambridge University to win the race. Wow. Yeah. Might he be? Yeah, he might, for all Andrew Longmore knows. Or is apparently prepared to bother trying to find out. Oh, well, hang on, be fair. You can't expect him to check a fact like that. It's no. not as if they keep records of who wins these races. So, yes, Dr Newland is the first Cambridge graduate to win the Grand National, let's say. Yeah, OK. For now, let's assume that's a fact. Hmm. Certainly, uh, Red Rum was at Oxford. Yes, yeah, I think he was. Yeah. It's an exciting race, though. Uh, listen to this. You could feel the shared commitment of horse and rider as Pino de Ray set his little neck in a living symbol of equine grit. Oh, that is impressive, isn't it? See, I don't think I've ever set my little neck in a living symbol of anything. Haven't you? We'll try it now. Um, try setting it in a living symbol of, of equine grit. Yeah, I said equine grit. Oh, that's very good. Very good. Um, and look, there's a bit here in the Telegraph oh, yeah. uh, where the jockey talks about the race. Ooh, okay. um, you keep going through a combination of tiredness and adrenaline. He kept swinging back on the bridle. He got me out of a lot of trouble. I kept finding it because I was trying to settle him. From the canal turn, it was jump and save, jump and save. I thought I'd sit behind Noel to two out and then make my way home. All right. Um, what does any of that mean? I think it means I sat on the horse and it ran along. Yes, yeah. It turned out that out of all the horses, the one I was sitting on was the fastest. Uh, oh, and look, there's another bit here. Uh, only the Grand National could do this. Huh? Just one look at the bespectacled face of Dr. Richard Newland mm -hmm. being chucked crazily up in the air by his family and friends could tell you that. That is a powerful image. It certainly is. Yeah. The family of a doctor crazily chucking his bespectacled face in the air. It's one of the enduring images of sport. I'm surprised I didn't put it on the front page. Well, maybe he forbade it. Mm. Maybe he didn't enjoy being crazily chucked. No. I don't mind being chucked, but please try to do it sensibly. And kindly chuck all of me, not just my bespectacled face. No, I want my bespectacled face to remain on my bespectacled body. Joined, of course, by my bespectacled neck, of course. Mind you, you can see why the family were so excited. Um, according to this, uh, they beat the royals. Yeah, listen, uh, many of the pre-race bets had gone on Monbeg Dude, jointly owned by Mike Tindall, the husband of Zara Phillips. Ah, the pre-race bets, yeah. as opposed to the post-race bets. Yeah, I tried to put on a post-race bet, and they were 
oddly unenthusiastic. Yeah, I think William Hill do tend to discourage them. Mm. Well, um, Tyndall inadvertently bought the horse at auction after assuming he would be outbid. When he returned home with his unexpected £12,000 purchase, his wife told him he was an idiot. Seems a bit harsh. Well, yeah. I mean, we've all inadvertently bought a horse. Well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> you're sitting at home, not wanting to buy a horse, yeah. so step one, get the bus to your nearest horse auction. Yeah, because, you know, face your fears. Step two, place a bit on a horse. Well, naturally. Step three, sit back and wait for it to be probably outbid. Step four, ride it home. Yeah, we've all done it. A thousand times. <laughs> And then, there you are on the doorstep with your inadvertent horse trying to explain it to the wife. It's happened again, Zara! Oh dear. Well, bring it in if you must, but try to make it take its shoes off. Well, thank you, John. You have clearly explained why that horse is on the front page of all the papers. You're welcome. So, what did this hamster do?